Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our special guest all the way from the United Kingdom is Anne-Marie Waters back with us today. She's a commentator, uh, a political provocateur, and the founder of For Britain. She's an expert on all things coming from across the pond as an indication of what we in America should be expecting over here. Anne-Marie, welcome back. Hi, Barry. Thank you very much for having me back. Oh, it's such a pleasure. So let's start off with COVID. Um, on our side here in America, um, restrictions come and go. Uh, we have uh, 50 states and 50 governors coming up with their own wacky rules on a almost daily basis. And the White House uh, has a bunch of experts coming up with the same stuff. I understand you've gone through the ups and downs and in and outs of what to do about COVID. Um, and some rather draconian restrictions are being placed on British subjects. Are people at this point saying enough's enough? Are they, are they saying we're just not going to do it anymore? What's the reaction generally? Yeah, I think people are saying that. And, and I, I think the word that I would use to summarize what people, how the, what the situation is here is confused. I mean, we don't have uh, 50 states with 50 governors. Uh, but it would it feels like we do because of the the mixed messages we're getting if you go through the bbc's front page it'll show you state of emergency declared in manchester uh infections up new lockdowns coming and then uh 50 off meals out uh you know they're encouraging us to go out for dinner in the middle of telling us that we're in the middle of a national emergency and the government is going to pay 50 percent of your bill when you go to the restaurant at the same time yeah at the same time they're telling us you're not to mix with the neighbors from down the street you're only allowed to spend time with your own family uh, if you do go out for dinner which we want you to do you have to keep it to your own family uh, so what if two families from the same street go to the same restaurant you know it's it, it's ridiculous nobody knows what so we we had um compulsory masks come in and i would say about 50 percent of people are wearing them so that to me is people saying we've had enough. We're not. We're not. Even though it's a, it's the police are enforcing this, we're still not doing it. Well, let's go one step further in that deep dive into the question on the mask thing. Mm. Um, I saw an interesting video. Maybe you've seen this, where painters who use spray machines, if they use a painter's mask, which is this N95 mask, and they paint, you know, paint an apartment or a flat, right? Mm. And then they take the mask off. There's like a ton of paint that gets through the mask and right. it covers the nose and the lips and everything. And then this video I, I, I saw showed that a virus, specifically COVID-19 size virus, is one one thousandth the size of an airborne paint particle. Right. So if it doesn't keep out paint that's a thousand times bigger, right? What's the point of a mask if it's a thousand times smaller? It goes right through the same material that you're breathing in and out of, doesn't it? Yeah, I, nobody knows the answer to that. Nobody knows why we're wearing them. And, and there's no answer coming from the government either. We're told vague things. It's not for you. It's not to keep the virus away from you. It's to protect other people from you if you have the virus. This is what we're told. So essentially, they're telling us that we clearly have a large number of people with the virus, but without symptoms, which tells me that it's not the dangerous, deadly uh, black plague that they're making us believe. We've shut down our entire economy for months for this. And now we're being told that it's not even symptomatic, and that the masks effectively do nothing except well, cause look. friction. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, if you want to get a little conspiratorial with me yeah. for a second, would you be willing to say that if the government can get you to wear a mask, when I say the government, it could be the British, mm -hmm. the Aussies, the French, the Germans, or the Americans, and a mask really doesn't keep out the virus, which we just discussed, it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. Is this sort of a dry run to get you? the people to be more sheep-like, to follow the instructions of the government, whether they make sense or not, 
And if so, what's coming next, Anne-Marie? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. If I was, I, I, I compare this to a science fiction film. I, I compare, and, and not just coronavirus, but previous to that, we're living in a science fiction film. I think it's the emergence of communism myself, but that's, um, that's a bit controversial, but that's what I do think it is. If I was to write a science fiction film about a, a sinister government taking away all of its citizens' freedoms in an instant, this is how I would do it. A, a protection from a disease which is filled with mystery, nobody quite knows. We built new hospitals for this that were left empty. There's still no patients have been treated in these hospitals. Uh, this is, it, this, it seems like a sinister ploy to confuse and upset and turn us against each other and to make us feel fear, lots and lots of fear. And yes, they have discovered now that about half of the population will do anything they are told to do, even without a decent explanation as to why they should do it. They believe the figures they're being given every day by the government, even though we know hospitals have been left empty, we're still told this many have died today. But who, who, well, who are these people? Why? Yes, yes, the government have discovered that people, about half of us, We'll do absolutely anything we are told to do, and we'll believe anything we are told to believe. And it's a frightening, it's a frightening reality. I, I can't be more enthusiastic in my agreement with you 100%, Anne-Marie. It's terrifying what you can get people to do if you control the media. Yes. It's the old Joseph Goebbels statement, give me control of the press and I will make the people into sheep or pigs or whatever. And my gosh, here, you've got people getting in fights at stores. If you run into somebody without a mask, the mask wearers will terrorize the not mask wearer because the government told them they should. Yes, and, and quite literally in our case, the leader of the Metropolitan Police, which is London's police force, is on record as saying, we want the public to shame, that's the word used, to shame non-mask wearers because in admitting we don't have enough police we don't they have, don't have enough police for actual crime um so they're not going to have enough for this they said well we're going to rely on the public to shame each other into wearing it so That's they're creating a, a 1984 type scenario where people it's a communism it's 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 like the soviet union people reporting each other um, and if they didn't report each other, they were frightened of what would happen to them if they didn't. And that's this kind of society we're creating. And how can people get a hold of you and see what you're doing online? Our website is forbritain.uk. Uh, that will have our manifesto, all of our contact details, uh, details of branches, how to help, how to get involved. Um, so forbritain.uk. Uh, please do check it out. Thank you so much. And for all of you that haven't subscribed in the US only, uh, please take out your cell phone and send the message truth and send it to 88202%. You'll be subscribed to our text message service that's always free and you'll get all the episodes like this one with Anne-Marie Waters directly to you on your cell phone. For ATP Report, I'm Bernie Newsbaum.